All right, thank you for joining us again. In our previous session, we looked at how to connect to the database by creating our um, connection class. We would have configured our constructor to establish the connection to the database. Using, we, are, we have been using the database movie. Um, we connect to the database using username root and no password. Remember, whatever your username is, whatever your password is, that is what you would have included. All right, so in this session, we are going to look quickly at as to how we insert data into our database. All right. Now, just to bear in mind what we are working with, we have three fields and the name of the um, the name of the table is FLIM. All right, so we have the fields FLIM ID, FLIM name, and year. So we're gonna just, let me just put these on my clipboard because we're gonna need them, all right? So what we're gonna do now is to do the insertion, we are gonna create a, a method to handle the insertion of the data. So we're gonna create a method public I'll make it public void insert data. All right, so this method is going to be accepting three fields. So if you remember, we have the fields, one fields for the, for the flim ID, we need one for the flim name and one for the flim year. All right, so here, I'm just gonna put them. So you need a flim ID. All right, so the flim ID, let's not make that int. So flim ID, we need also the flim name, and we need a flim year. All right, so let me just add the data tags. So the flim name would be string, the flim year would be int, all right? Good. So essentially what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be passing the data to the insert method that will then take the data from there and insert them into the database, all right? Now, once we're interfacing with the database, our code will go into a try and catch. So we're gonna put this section into a try and catch. And what we're gonna try to do is to create a query. So we're gonna create a string to store the query. All right, this part doesn't have to be in the, in the try and catch because this won't cause a problem, but this part definitely. So the query that we are gonna be generating so we're gonna create a query to insert the data into the database. So you're gonna say query is equal to, and the query is just gonna be a, a text, a string, all right? So we insert into, and the name of the, the, the table that we are working with, you can always just check back. It's um, flim, you have to bear that in mind. It has to be spelled the same way. All right, so we're inserting into flim. And the fields are flim ID, flim name, and flim year. So these are the fields that we are um, using. These are the fields that are in our table. And then now in terms of the value, all right, so the value that we are gonna be putting inside of our, um, our table, will be coming from the parameters that we would have included up here. All right, so the data will be passed to the method and then we insert them. All right, so I'll have to create one string and store it in um, query. So notice here, I have an open quotation. That's a double quote. All right, so because I'm creating one long string, I'm just going to um, close it here because the next thing that we'll be inserting is the flim id 
So I'm going to close this. Now, because the flim ID is an integer, there's no need for me to put a quotation around it. So I'm just going to concatenate it. So I'm going to add flim ID plus. All right, so now, so this would have added the flim ID to the string. The next thing that I'm going to be adding is the flim name. So the flim name now is a string. So I'm going to surround that with a double quote. So now I'm going to start the other part of the string. So notice that this double quote would have closed this one. Then we have the value from the parameter here. Now, what I'm going to do now, before I put the flim name, I'm going to put, um, first I'm going to have to put a comma in between, and then I'm going to put a single quote. So I'm going to be surrounding this, the flim name with this, with a single quote, all right? So let's follow and see. So that's a double quote. Then we have the comma. So this comma is just going to be used to separate the flim, the flim ID and the flim name. So that's a comma followed by a single quote. The single quote here is going to be for the, um, the first quote around the flim name, whatever the flim name is. All right. So once that is done, I can then close this. That's a comma, then a single quote. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to concatenate the flim name here. So I'm going to just say flim name. All right. Plus. All right. So once the flim name has been added, the next thing to do is to put a comma between. So the comma has to be added using in the double quote. So it's going to be a comma after the comma. Then we're going to have the flim year. If it was a if it was a string, I'm gonna I would have to put a single quote and you know just surround it with a single quote. All right. So now let's make sure that we have everything in place. So we have the first single quote here for the flim name, and we need the other one here. This one is going to close it. All right, so this will be around the flim name. This will be around the flim name. So these two are for the flim name. The next thing that we have now is the flim year. And I can just concatenate it here, which is flim year. If you notice the fields from the parameter, they appear black while the others appear green. All right, that's just an indication that um, these are actually coming from the parameter. What you see in the in green, those are actually um, literal as they are. All right. So now what I need to do now, I need to also close a bracket. So I would have opened a bracket here. So again, the bracket has to be, I can't just add a bracket like that. No, I have to concatenate it in double quotes like that. All right. So once we're finished, um, let's put our semicolon. And of course, that is going to be our, um, our query. All right. Now let's go. So the next thing that we need to do is to execute the query. So we're going to have to say st that execute query. All right. Let's execute update rather. And inside here, we're going to pass the query. So pretty much we're just telling the system to execute the query for us. And then we just check for the exception to catch. All right. Again, if there's an error, all I want to do is just to shoot out a message using my J option pin. I'll just use the one that I would have created before, which is this one. All right, so good. So this should take care of the insert for us. Now let's let's test it. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna test it using um, the object, the name of the object that we'd have created. So we're gonna try to see if we can insert something into the database. 
Now let's check to see if there's anything in the in the flim table. So select star from flim. All right, so let's see. As you can see, it's empty. There's no flim in there. All right, so let's see if this works. If it works, it it will put our data into the um into the database still for us. So I'm just gonna say cdb that inserts data. So I'm using the object name to in invoke the method that we'd have created up here. And inside of this method, we're gonna be passing in a movie ID, a movie, um, the film title. Let's call it graduation. 2021 and the flim year 2021. All right. So if if this works successfully, we should be seeing the data in the database after we would have compiled this program. So let's run this program and see. All right. So Nothing came up in terms of error. Now let's see if we're still seeing blank when we run this. Wow, it works. So we have successfully um, created a method to insert the data into the database. All right, so good. So one down. So all right, so let's just look back at what, what we did. So we would have created this method that accepts three parameters, one for the flim ID, one for the name of the flim one for the year of the flim we create a string to store the query all right this is just a regular query that we would have typed in um, workbench or whichever interface you use for your database and um, we just in enter the, the the syntax insert into the name of the table and these are the column headings and we have our value all right remember we we um we close this double quote here. We concatenate the flim ID. We don't put any quotation around it because it's just um, an integer. No need for a quotation. Even though it would work still if you put a quotation around it. But over here now, when we are going to put in the, um, the flim name, um, we would have concatenate a new portion of a string. So we have our double quote comma the comma is to separate the flim name from the flim id and then we have a single quote this single quote is going to go over the name of the flim so if the name of the flim is graduation 2021 so you'd have a single quote then graduation 2021 plus here we can continue it again a single quote so the entire graduation 2021 is surrounded by um, two single quotes and then we have a comma and then here we this double quote closes this one. And then we concatenate the flim year. Again, the flim year doesn't need any single quote around it. And then we concatenate the, the bracket, the parentheses. All right, and next we just close. So once we have set up our, our query, the next thing to do is to execute the query by simply saying st.execute update and we pass the query name. If there's an ex exception, it will just shoot out an error message for us. All right, so thank you for watching. And that is how we go about inserting data into our, into our database. All right, so stay tuned. Up next, we will look at another, another useful function that we may, um, may use to manipulate our database. All right.